not to speak of finding Eric walks up and he's like, hey, it's Eric, remember me from five years ago? And I'm like, Sorry, I, I totally had a brain fart. I totally did, I, I apologize. But I came here five years ago and I loved it. I mean, just seeing all the costumes, all the people dressed up. There's no other con like this. I mean, and I've been to every con in the world practically and this one, it just, it takes the cake. Um, I, uh, I love it, I love it. And honestly, every year I, I, I wonder, are they gonna ask me back? Oh, not this year. Are they gonna ask me back? Oh, not this year. So I'm back again, and I'm trying to figure out a way, thank you. I'm trying to figure out a way to be able to come here every year. Maybe I can be co-assistant chair of Trek Tracks, maybe, and help out as your assistant. <laughs> oh, he unzipped them, so he didn't take them off. But then again, John Billingsley, what has he been doing lately? He's been doing True Blood. All he does is take off his clothes and mask. I mean, he's, he's running around naked, having just, you know, fornicating left and right. It's pretty darn funny, actually. I saw him the other day for the first time on Friday. I was like, John, awesome seeing you naked oh, so much. Yeah, awesome. Um, no, like I said, I love, I love coming to conventions because I really do. Um, enjoy the time that I have on stage when I have a stage talk, just because it's my chance to show people um, a little bit of who I am, as opposed to what you're used to seeing day in and day out when you did watch Voyager, or if you're still watching Voyager now, if you're watching for the first time. Um, you see Kim, and oftentimes fans will kind of perceive characters as what the real life person is like, you know, they'll say, oh, they're kind of, they must be like that. And oftentimes it's completely opposite, you know, of who they are. And for me, on the show, I think Kim was a pretty serious fellow, you know, more, more or less. I mean, there was a lot of, there was a lot of this. She was down 30% captain. 20%. 15%. Any trained monkey could have done that, to be honest with you. Once in a while, I would get an episode where I got to shine. Once in a while. You get to see something like uh, uh, Timeless, okay? The episode where the ship crashes into the planet, the ice planet. Remember that one? Yeah. That was the 100th episode. And I remember when they, the writers were, were um, telling me about that episode. They said, by the way, we're about to film the 100th episode in a couple of weeks. And uh, we've, we're polishing up the script. And we'd like to tell you that it's pretty much the Kim episode. And they were going to do it as a two-parter, two-part episode, but they decided to keep it as a single episode. And the words that were spoken to me, um, if I can call them correctly, was they wanted the 100th episode, Timeless, to be Voyager's city on the edge of forever. That's what they said. This is going to be the signature. Yeah! So once Kim got the signature episode of Voyager, the fact that it became the Doctor Seven of Nine show afterwards, I didn't really care at that point. I was like, that's cool. That's all right. We'll go ahead and yeah, that's fine. Um, anyway, uh, how many people have had eight hours of sleep last night? Hmm. Six or less? Four or less? <laughs> Eric. Uh, two or less? Wow, who has not gone to sleep? All right, so we've got a couple of two hours. Okay, yeah, I'm working on about three and a half, four, exactly. Um, if I was to change the programming of, of Dragon Con, I would make the Walk of Fate open at 1.30 p.m. only. <laughs> 1.30, that's it. That's, you don't have to show up any earlier, that's fine. 